It's always so interesting to see a manufacturer that's not known for something in particular try something a little different. It's especially interesting when that company is the modest and humble yet legendary manufacturer named ICS. I've already seen that ICS can make a comfortable gas blowback pistol, and that they can do it for cheap without sacrificing quality faster than a sinking iron ship, but here we are again with something different. They could have went with an M1911 or something else that's been done dozens of times over, but here we are now. This is the ICS BLE XPD. To be honest, I'm very late on doing this review. I received this ICS XPD as well as an M9 replica and an M1 Grand replica from ICS directly several months ago. I just couldn't get any time to sit down and really study this pistol, but now that I have a couple cans of green gas and a couple free days on my calendar, we can now begin where we always do, with the unboxing. This begins with a pretty flashy cardboard box with black leopard ID decals on top and a sticker in front to show you what's inside. It's a pretty nice look. Inside we get everything out in the open and not secured down at all. Nothing in here is broken or damaged but a couple styrofoam sheets and some thin bubble wrap isn't all that great. Even with everything in this box I can still shake the contents from side to side rather easily so I'd say that ICS could improve here or I could be just over exaggerating or nitpicking. Regardless, inside we get a black metal threaded tip wrapped in a small ziplock bag, a two piece unjamming slash cleaning rod and a manual sheet showing you all the basics you'll need to know about the XPD pistol. There really isn't a need for anything more than this sheet as it explains the need to know information as well as including an exploded view of the pistol so that's nice to see. Then we have the ICS Black Leopard Eye XPD itself and its 16 round green gas magazine. This magazine fits the XPD quite well but it might not add the kind of grip that some people might like as this is a compact pistol with a short grip and that's why the extended magazine can be had to jump up your magazine capacity from 16 rounds to 24 rounds while adding some length to the grip for any hanging fingers. I appreciated the grip so much more after this thanks to the grip extension on the extended magazine so keep this in mind if you're interested in the XPD. Holding the ICS XPD in your hand you can see that it's a pretty compact pistol being a bit larger than the Glock 26. Weight also comes in at about one pound thanks to nylon fiber frame. The XPD can also be had in three colors, from all black, all tan, a model with a black CNC aluminum slide riding on a tan nylon fiber frame, which is the combo you see here today, as well as a reverse colored model. At the very end of the metal outer barrel, we have this plastic orange tip for the US models that I was quick to pinch off with a set of pliers. This is supposed to be a compact pistol, so taking that off will shorten the length up just a bit. You can then throw on the thread adapter that we pulled out of the box, so you can add on a small tracer unit if you feel like it. As for barrel wobble, there's a bit in every direction, but there's not too much, so it's pretty average. Next is the aluminum slide, with very little side to side movement. Three key features did stand out here on the slide however, the first of which being the mock round indicator that will rest inside the slide until the pistol is racked back. This will show you when the pistol is ready to be fired, but personally, my favorite thing about the slide are the sights. These sights are very clear and easy to use, but ICS could have just dotted them with some white paint and called it a day. But these sights glow in the dark, and whatever paint they used made them glow for well over four hours. I actually fell asleep while waiting for the glow to finally fade away. I'm sure that some representatives from ICS will see this review, so I hope you hear this part. Put this glow in the dark paint on more guns, because now, I want to redot all my Galil's close quarter posts with glow in the dark paint. Then to wrap up the slide, we have XPD Compact engraved on one side and the Black Leopard Eye logo on the other side, with a little detail written on the barrel, and then we got serrations up front on both sides and on the rear on the slide on both sides. Flipping up this lever after ejecting the magazine and racking the slide, we can push the slide forward and off of the frame to expose the hop up dial. Taking the frame down to the bare minimum, we can see some points of wear on the inside and on the top of the outer barrel. We can then see how the mock round indicator works from here, and we can feel just how light everything is. Putting the XPD back together and moving on to the frame, I'll start by showing off the three safeties, the first of which is actually underneath the frame on the rail segment up front. This rail is really small so not much will go here, but the safety in question is a simple switch. Just push it back towards the rear of the pistol and you won't be able to pull the trigger. The other two safeties are pretty standard stuff. We have a metal beaver tail safety and a glock style trigger safety, both of which must be pressed down firmly to fire the XPD. 
and then the rest of the controls are of course pretty standard. We have a left side slide release, a takedown lever just in front of that. Really the only thing that really stands out on the frame besides the texturing all around the grip is the ambidextrous magazine release. This will drop the magazine freely no matter which one you use, but would it have been a huge problem to just add on a slide release onto the right side of the gun as well? I don't know, that would have just improved practicality just a bit more for me. The ICS XPD is pretty practical as it is though. It's a small pistol with a good trigger on it, and if it's a little too short, then get yourself the extended magazine. That will make this pistol so much more comfortable. But what would I want to see changed if I could make any improvements to this pistol? Well, for one, just add a gray option. I think that all tactical gray guns just look really good. But more seriously, an ambi slide release would have been pretty nice to see. Besides that, there's not really much for me to pick on here. But I would like to know what's up at the bottom of the extended magazine. It looks like it can take a CO2 bulb. Not sure what that's about. But something about these magazines really stands out. It's the ICS Revo system. A new longer valve is sitting in both of these magazines that allows you to fill their gas chambers to their full capacity, unlike just about every other gas pistol magazine. We never get a full magazine worth of gas due to air in the tank that fights against the liquid gas that pours in when holding a gas can to a magazine. But with the new Revo system valves that will be in all future ICS gas blowback pistols, well, we'll be able to kick this old habit that we've been secretly working around for far too long. Now we can just hold a gas can to the valve and just wait until it spills over. And now that magazine is completely filled with gas. No guessing, no double checking, no wasted time holding a gas can to the valve when it's not even pouring in more gas. This is great for a ton of reasons, but the major reason is now we get so much more out of traditional gas magazines. The release valve has also been upgraded to allow anyone who can use a pair of pliers to take it out and apart to adjust it to release more gas upon a hammer strike, which will jump the FPS a bit more just to help out when the temperature outside is challenging your pistol's reliability. Add a couple o-rings to that same release valve and now you can fight back really hot temperature days. ICS is really the underdog that needs more attention for stuff like this. These new upgrades can also be found in the new ICS BM9 that I was also sent and can also be had in the newer BLE XAE pistols. This is really pushing me to say that this pistol is worth its $125 price tag but let's see what it can do at the chronograph first. With a bottle of 0.2 gram high power airsoft BBs and a bottle of green gas, we got sub 300 feet per second readings that shouldn't worry any CQB arena that I can think of. This isn't the most consistent pistol that I've ever tested however, and these tests were done on a 98 degree Fahrenheit day with 33% humidity. You might also notice I'm holding down slide catch here and in the range test coming up. Well, that's because of a strange quirk that this pistol has, or at least that mine has. You can't be weak wristed with this pistol. It just won't cycle properly and it'll cause the slide to just get caught up every time on the slide catch. Now, I'm not sure if this is on every XPD, but as you can see, it's happening here for me. I have to properly grip this pistol and put something to absorb the recoil from the slide during shooting. You can still fire this gun one handed though. That's not much of a problem. Anyway, at the range, I'll be pretty blunt with you. This is not a 150 foot pistol, not at all. I don't even think that anyone will be threatened by you using this compact pistol at this range. Even with a 0.2 gram BB, 130 feet was a little challenging. Who would have known that a pistol with a two and a half inch barrel wouldn't be too stellar at range. You should really stick to 100 foot engagements with this pistol. You'll live longer that way. One thing that this pistol has going for it is its gas consumption thanks to the Revo valves. I filled this little 16 round magazine with green gas until it spilled over and I was able to get 46 shots off with the first fill, 51 shots off with the second fill, and 56 shots with a third fill of gas. And just to test it out, I found that adding a suppressor of this size onto the end of the barrel will affect consumption just a bit. I was only able to get 35 shots off before the XPD began to have cycling issues before degassing itself altogether. However, that's all coming out of this little magazine with a full blowback pistol with a metal slide. You're telling me that this little magazine is on par with some gas rifles that have gas tanks several times larger than the XPDs. And the 24 round extended magazine did even better with 83 shots with the first fill and 85 shots with the second fill. So being as realistic and as honest as I can be, is this pistol worth $125? Yes, I'd say so, but the range is limiting. 
I believe that it's worth it because the build quality that was very solid and was deprived of any major flaws that I could find. I believe that it's worth the price for how comfortable it feels and the glow in the dark sights that no one should have any problems using. And I believe that it's worth the price for the CQB legal velocities. And it's stellar on gas consumption that puts a lot of our gas blowback pistols to shame. That's all coming from a company that's not known for gas guns. So I would say that a lot of companies need to take notes from ICS immediately. I want to see the Revo system in more pistols and I'm happy that I got to find out more about it with this release. I'm just wondering what the gas consumption would be like in some gas rifles if we put the Revo system in those magazines. I honestly thought that I wouldn't like this pistol for whatever reason at first, but this pistol's build quality and performance really persuaded me. I'll definitely be adding links in the description to where you can learn more about the XPD, and hopefully I hope to hear from owners of this pistol in the comments down below, or from interested viewers of this review. I want to thank ICS for sending me this pistol, as well as the BM9 and the M1 Grand that I truly love and can't wait to review in the future. I also want to thank you for watching this review. Please spank that like button to show your support for US Airsoft, as the more likes we get, the more that YouTube pushes my content. Shoutouts do go to these past commenters, as well as everyone in the notification squad. But until that next video drops from the city of San Antonio, this has been Scott Hollenbeck. Thanking you all for 167,000 subscribers, and I'll be sure to see you all next time.